Hello and welcome guys. Thank you for joining me again for another edition of Woman to Woman. I am your host and Tricia Bray Smith, author, educator, and public speaker. I am the voice for those who suffer in silence. It is indeed a blessing to be here with you today as today we have a special guest host, Ms. Tamia Davis from Tamia's Tiny Budget. And guys, I tell you, Today is going to be nothing less than awesome because our topic is something that we can all relate to and it's about debt. However, today we're talking about crushing that debt. We're talking uh, about taking all those debts and how we can develop a plan to put it under our feet once and for all. And who better to talk about crushing debt than my guest here today in the studio, Ms. Tamia Davis. Go ahead and say hello and tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. All right. Um, my name is Tamia. Uh, I have a platform that I created on Instagram called Tamia's Tiny Budget. I started it in September 2020 and the idea just came to me. I was talking to my sister about, you know, um, becoming debt free and me wanting to share this journey because I just it needs to be told you know and I was like okay um, I was kind of hesitant about whether or not I wanted to do it because it is money is a very you know mm -hmm. sensitive topic but I was like you know what what am I gonna lose you know so I said let me put myself out there and so since September 2020 I've been sharing um, my debt free journey and I kind of started a little different by saving up um, emergency on and then started to pay off debt but um i i have a platform that's just where we talk about money and also um i wanted to create a space where people didn't feel judged or hounded on and saying you better do it this way or this that and the third it's just i simply want to post information that i find useful and things that i've done for me that is um useful and then share with others and they can decide how they want to um use that information to improve their life yeah I, I think sometimes we confuse that when we go on not only a debt uh free journey but also when it comes to weight loss when it comes to relationships when it comes to education and how we should look at these things we all think sometimes unrealistically there there's a one size fix all formula and it's really not it's that i can take some of your ideas I have ideas myself. We can grab ideas from other people, other platforms, and then take all that knowledge and apply it to our lives where it fits, because not everything is going to fit. Uh, so we, we said that you had a conversation with, with your sister. Is it necessary to have some kind of uh, motivation or accountability partner when you set out uh, on uh, tackling your debt? Absolutely. I, I definitely needed someone to uh, push me and someone to hold me accountable because if not, I was going to spend another year of my life saying, oh, I'm going to pay it off. I'm going to do it. This, you know, I'm going to do it. So having that, um, you know, talking to my sister about it, but then making that platform really is what helped, helped me um, stay accountable and continue the journey because I know now I have a, a, a whole uh, village of people counting yeah. on me. <laughs> and they're looking, they're looking for those updates. And so and now it's just not, you know, my family knows it's, you know, strangers that mm -hmm. don't know, you know, don't, has, has never met me and they're, they're counting on me. And I really think that, like I said, anything you try in life that having that support is, is, is needed. You're going to need that support to get you through the difficulties and also hold you accountable. And it's so key to have a network of individuals who um, are like-minded and who can support you through anything you try in life. Mm. It's well, well, well said. I know many people like me, you know, we're, we're sitting around and, um, you know, we've made plans, we've made a budget and we're making progress, but sometimes we can get discouraged and just making a little progress when we have this great, huge uh, numbers looking at us, you know. Um, Tell us how we can give ourselves just a little bit of grace when it comes to tackling our debts. Because I know 
you know, we're looking at the stimulus that we're expecting to come in. We're looking at uh, our tax refunds a lot of ways, wondering how we can maximize on those refunds. But then, like you said, we find ourselves going right back to that cycle again to where we're, we're, we haven't really developed those old habits and we don't have those accountability partners, but yet somebody is dependent on us, guys. Our, our families are dependent on us, you know, to, to keep the household going and things like that. So how can we give ourselves grace in a time like we're living in now to where it seems like everything is after our, our, after our finances? Um, yes, yeah, so that's a great question. I think, you know, one of the things that uh, you have to do going into something like this is first just starting the budget, you know, and just being mindful of where your money is going and, and realize that when you start something like this, it's, it's not going to be perfect. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's part of how you learn. That's how you become an expert or something. You, you know, you practice it over and over and over again. And then one day it's just like, it's an afterthought, you know? So when you start this process, yes, it's going to be times where you might fall off um, and you might, you know, be hard on yourself. But what you have to do is as an individual, you have to, like you said, practice grace. You have to sit there and say to myself, okay, why am I doing this? Okay. What, what is important to me? Where do I want to, where do I want to be a year from now? Where do I want to be two years from now? Where do I want to be 10 years from now? And then when you look at that and you can envision, okay, man, once I do this, five years from now, you know, my life is going to be completely, completely different. I, I will be debt free. And that $800 that I'm spending a month towards debt can go towards something else, you know? And I think it's just human nature for us to kind of like, when we don't hit a goal, when we don't check something off our list to kind of like beat up on ourselves. But then you have to practice and say, okay, what have I done? You know, yes, I accomplished this. You know, I, I did this so far this month. Okay, why didn't I look at, um, you know, why did I accomplish, you know, everything I wanted? And you start to realize, okay, some of the triggers and some of the things in, in, in your life that, okay, I, I may need to, you know, change or, um, or make additions to, uh, to, to reach your goal. And I know for me, one of the things that I did when I first started my journey is that I didn't have a fun budget, you know, in this debt free community, it's always like, pay off debt, don't have a life. And I'm, I'm, I'm a young lady, you know, <laughs> I want to enjoy life and you have to enjoy life. You know? And so when I started, I was very strict on myself. I didn't put anything for anything for, you know, fun budget. And then it just, you know, it was the one that one month I was like, oh no, this is, this is, it can't be it, you know? And that was an easy way for me to kind of get myself off of track because right then and there, I could have been like, okay, I can't do anything, um, you know, while I'm paying off debt. So I don't want to do this. I said, no. I said, going forward, I will include some, some, some money, allocate some money monthly to be able to, to have some fun. And so that's what you do. You give it that. That's how I practice grace. I look at, you know, some of the things that I might have had difficulties or struggle with this month and see how I can change this, but then also say, okay, yes, Camille, you didn't give yourself a fun budget, but look at all the um, other things you excelled in on your budget. You know, you were able to save this amount of money this month. You were able to not go over your budget this month. And the only thing you forgot to do or that you felt that wasn't important at that time was to not have a fun budget. And now we're going forward and we're making those changes. And then it makes the process, you know, a lot better going forward. That, that was so beautifully said. I, I can't uh, express how that was even a reminder for me, you know, because those are uh, some of the things that we forget. We forget to include uh, the fun budget, as you call it. Some of us call it a budget for entertainment. And then uh, we forget to pay ourselves too. So, so right. it becomes more of a task to, to do that when we're not rewarding ourselves and when we're not giving ourselves enough credit or enough grace to for the accomplishments, to celebrate those little uh, milestones that we make along the way. Yeah. So I can definitely uh, relate to that. I can definitely relate to that. Um, so what number did you start at? You, you said in September you went to social media to create a platform to help share your journey uh, with people. I'm, I'm interested in knowing if it's not too personal, what number did you start at? 
Yes. Um, so to, I started the platform in September 2020, but I actually will say I started my debt-free journey um, in February uh, 2020. And I started, I will say I maybe had about 15 to 200 um, or 1500 to $2,000 saved up. And I had this aspect of like, okay, I wanted to have an emergency fund for, you know, a rainy day. And you'll hear a lot about, you know, how much money someone should have for a rainy day. But then the pandemic hit and, uh, you know, there was talks at my job and, you know, just we didn't know what was what to expect from this pandemic. So I said to myself, okay, I want to save uh, six months of an emergency fund. And I decided that, okay, looking at my expenses, my rent, you know, um, food, you know, transportation, those key things I need, how much a month do I need? So once I figured that out, I got a number of 10,000, I think it was $10,800. Um, $10, so I was saving, um, since February, 2020, I was saving like $1,200 a month. Um, taxes, I, you know, I saved a portion of that. When we got the first stimulus, I saved a portion, portion of that. So then when September um, came around, I had a good amount of savings of, of, um, of six months. And so then I decided, okay, what's the next thing that I wanted to do? I decided that it, I was not ready to start paying off my debt because I um, also wanted to buy a used vehicle. I have been not, um, I've not had a vehicle for over two years and I, you know, I just got tired of walking everywhere and taking, you know, Uber to public transportation. And I had a friend who had a vehicle that they were willing to uh, uh, sell to me for, um, you know, a discounted price. And so from uh, January, or excuse me, from um, September, 2020 to January, uh, 2021, I saved up uh, for, a, for a used car. And I saved around, again, I'm going to say a close to like $5,000 and as any, like I got a bonus from work. And so, you know, cutting back, making those budgets again, really helped with that because you really put a dollar, uh, uh, you know, you put a name to every dollar, you know, yeah. so you know, you know, okay, I'm saving this much. I, I always save $1,200. Now, if I save more is because, you know, I spent less money on, you know, groceries, right? Mm -hmm. So then it was an extra hundred dollars in, in, into my savings. So then January 2020, um, 2021 came around and I was like, okay, we're here. You know, they extended the interest, uh, you know, the pause of the interest of, for federal student loans. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was discussion in the debt free community. Okay, you know, are they going to cancel loans or are we going to get $10,000 loan cancellation? Are they going to forgive all of it? Are they going to forgive $50,000? I was like, the way that they move in, they're not going to do nothing no time soon. <laughs> so with me, I had, I started off with close to $76,000 in student debt. Wow. And I did not take off that much. I went to school for my bachelor's. I went to school for my master's. And that some of that was $64,000. Yeah. But you talk about interest over the years. It, the interest, you know, added up to $10,000 in interest. So um, when January came roll around this uh, this year, I decided that I had a pay raise, so I allocate every month um, a minimum of fifteen hundred dollars a month towards just paying off my debt. Yeah. And how I do that is um, my my student loans. Uh, I have eleven student loans, and I start off with just paying off the one uh, that was the lowest. Mm -hmm. And I actually in, uh, earlier this week I was able to complete, you know one loan pay off one loan awesome <laughs> let me stop and just celebrate you right now yes that is a great accomplishment because i'm looking at myself i have fifty thousand by itself you know that that ha i have to tackle you know but when i started this uh debt-free journey and begin on on my journey to uh, financial uh, freedom and independence, however, whatever term you use, um, you know, I had 70 something thousand worth of debt. Uh, I haven't got the raises. I haven't, um, my, my financial situation, you know, it, it hasn't really changed much, but it took more for me establishing uh, better habits, better spending habits, really understanding 
where my money is going. And instead of my money just swung in out 10, 15 different ways every month, me beginning to get intentional, writing it down, seeing it, what it looks like, and creating a plan, creating a budget, and having enough discipline to stick to that. And even when I wasn't as disciplined in writing it down and looked at it, looking at it, you know, from month to month, I was still able to hold myself accountable because I want better. I desire better. So even when your financial situation doesn't change, it does not mean that your, uh, your, your, your debt has to stay the same or has to continue to increase. When you develop those habits, uh, when it relates to spending and, and really looking at where your money is going and sacrificing and eliminating things that do not return on investment for you. So uh, what are some things that you can minimize or reduce when you're, when you're looking at the women today and some of the things we're facing, not knowing uh, sometimes where our next penny is going to come from, what are some things that you suggest that they can start in sacrificing or minimizing from their budget? Yes. So I think the first thing you really need to do is if you have credit cards, if you have your bank accounts, you need to look over those, look over those accounts, print those, print those monthly, you know, bank statements out and go through it, circle, highlight everything that you, you know, you spent money on that was, I would say, was a, a want. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that was, that you, that you absolutely needed. And you'll see for me, it was food. I love going out to eat. I was spending so much money on takeout. I mean, you could just ask Chipotle. They know my name. Like I always talk about Chipotle because that I used to spend so much money there over the years. And once I realized, I was like, man, I was spending a hundred dollars a month, sometimes even more than that, to going out to eat, you know. And for me, once I saw that on those bank statements, I was like, man, that is that's wild. And you don't even need to take out your bank statements. You could just download an app. Because you can, some banks now, like for example, the Mint app, it tells you, it's, it, it breaks everything down up in categories, you know? Um, and I would see, okay, I spent a lot of money on, on takeout. Amazon was another, I was buying all types of stuff from Amazon that I used maybe once or twice, didn't use at all, never sent back. So right then and there, you, you really have to just first take a look at your account, you know, and, or your bank statements and seeing where am I spending money and then what are the things I'm spending money on and do I really need them? Once you get that mindset of, okay, all this stuff that I'm spending money on, I can, I, I don't really need all this stuff, then that's going to be extremely helpful, right? And then once you, once you do that, another thing that was, is helpful is your bills, okay? I don't have cable. I didn't have internet the first, and this is just me, I didn't have internet the first year I lived in my apartment. And when I did get internet, I looked around, I got the, most, the best rate, the $35 rate, the basic plan, you know? And when they tried to raise my bill to $65, I sat and I called, on, called them on the phone. It took literally three different times for me to get back to that $35 rate. But that right there, you know, saves me hundreds of hundreds of dollars. I don't have cable, you know. Um, you, I know some people, they, they love their shows. I, I, and they, that's like a deal breaker for them. For me, it wasn't. So just having, you know, a regular Netflix um, and internet, you know, that's my source of entertainment when it comes to television. Um, also even with apartments, when it was time to renew my lease, I remember when I went to renew my lease, you know, they told me, oh, it was going to be $65. And I was like, to, you know, to increase, you know, my rent. And I was like, well, that's a little too much, but I was a little, you know, I was a little passive and it takes, you have to be a person that's like, that has to go in. You just have to ask for what you want. And I kind of was like, okay, I kind of walked away from the situation and then once I build up the courage, I went back down there and I uh, had talked to the, the apartment manager directly. And I was just like, okay, you know, I've been here, you know, for a year now, I haven't had any issues, you know, I, I'm a good tenant, you know? And they were like, yes, you know, they changed that $65, I believe down to, you know, 55. And I probably could have got it lower if I would have talked some more, but I was just happy to see, you know, I was like, yes, it worked, you know? And 
also, I think when it comes to any of your bills, you just going in and, you know, and asking them, okay, I've been a customer. I've been with you guys for X amount of time. Even if it was a year, for me, it was a year in my apartment, a year for my, for my cable, but you paid the money, right? For a service, ask them, you know, and the only thing that can really tell you is we can't do that. And then you just call back another day and speak to another representative until someone tells you yes. So I think that's key right there. It's just kind of negotiating those things in your life that um, those bills and aspects um, in your life that you are able to. And then also um, for me, like I said, I've sacrificed um, two years not having a vehicle and that saved me a, a lot of money. I didn't have a car payment. I didn't have to worry about insurance. I didn't have to worry about maintenance. You know, I had this, I had this vision in mind that I wanted to pay off debt and I, and it, it took me some years to kind of make a plan, you know, to really fit, but I, I'm glad I did that because that was two years of money that, you know, of, 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 of a bill that I didn't, I didn't have, you know, um, and I was able to do that. Some people are in situations where they, you know, they need a vehicle, but if you're going to need it, if you're going to have to get a vehicle, are you able to get a used vehicle? You know, you don't have to lease the brand new 2021, you know, <laughs> all the time, you know? So, you know, I, I'm not going to tell people exactly what to do with the money, how they should spend it, but just to give them that that idea of like, oh, man, this, these are some things that, you know, I can do with it. And, and um, you know, um, some different ways that I can look at look at money. Man, that, that, that you dropped so many bombshells and nuggets and gems <laughs> and stuff and that. I, I don't think any more uh, can be said after that. Uh, it gives you some idea, no, ma no matter who's listening, uh, no matter who's watching this broadcast, you know, there was lots that you can consider in what she just said on how to get some of your money uh, freed up so that you can apply it toward debt. And, and no matter where you are, no matter what your income is coming in, what, no matter what you have going out, you can't continue to do the same things that you've been doing and expect a different outcome because no amount of money you get coming in additionally is going to change the habits that you have. You must be willing to sacrifice somewhere and free up some of that money so that you can, instead of your money tell you what to do, you begin to tell that money what to do. I, I think back at my own journey uh, even throughout over the years, you know, um, cable, it, it was one of the things that I, uh, sacrificed, you know, my, I didn't raise my kids in the house with cable, you know, I felt like it was a waste of, of money because much of what was streaming, uh, through cable channels anyway, I didn't need my children watching it and it wasn't healthy <laughs> for me as well. <laughs> So it, it's still now, even now, you know, we're not uh, big on cable or anything like that. And with the internet being so uh, sophisticated like it is, you know, when you have something like uh, Netflix or Hulu or Disney and some of the other uh, apps that are out there, and then there's even some free apps to, to where you don't even have to have a monthly subscription to watch TV shows or movies or something like that. YouTube is free. Uh, <laughs> every day, you know, and it has some good movies and shows and stuff that are on there. So uh, think about what's important to you. I like what you said about uh, the vehicles in, you know, and for many of us in these rural areas, you know, we, we have to have something, some form of transportation, but you said we didn't have to have those 2021s. We didn't have to lease the best. We can settle for something for cash. But also thinking about that, guys, along with those vehicles, she said it, you have the insurance, you have the maintenance and upkeep, you have um, the, the, the fuel that you have to put in it. So consider all those things are going to uh, take your money, eating out. And I'm a, I bash on that all the time when it comes to finances. Eating out is okay sometimes, but when you really look at the funds it takes, for that convenience, it drains our finances. It, it drains it and it drains it quick. You know, you look at those value meals. Is it really a value? You know, if you take that same amount of money you spend in a week 
in fast food and take that to the grocery store, it will make a difference not only in the budget that you're allowing for food, but also in your health on the backside of that as well, because you're going to be eating more nutritious uh, uh, foods and it just overall does the entire family so much better. So uh, if you must eat out, use it at some kind of reward for accomplishing um, your goals for three months or something like that. And just kind of um, find ways that you can do meal preps um, that are healthier and not take up a lot of your time. Because I know many of us women, that's one of the reasons why we go through the drive through it's because we don't have enough time and we're not going to get any more time than we have. It's just about managing that time a little better. And some of the things that I've done to uh, cut food expenses is I use a crock pot. I use the crock pot. Um, I, I try to plan meals uh, and, um, you know, I take my food to work. And, and that's where many of us get into that spending trap. We're going to work, we're at the vending machines, we're running to the convenience store to grab that soda and donuts, all that stuff that does us no good. So uh, we have to rethink how we are doing this. Everything is after our finances. Tamir, you have dropped so many nuggets today and I know we have to wrap up. Uh, any last uh, words of wisdom, any uh, last thoughts that you'd like to share with the people listening today? Um, yes, I just want to encourage everyone to start and make a plan today um, with their money. I know it, for me, I'm a single female. Um, so from my perspective, it's a lot easier for, it might be a lot easier for me to do certain things because um, I don't have to worry about um, anyone else uh, <laughs> that depends on me. Um, but no matter what your income is, take a look at how you're spending your money and see where you can cut back on things. And then also start saving, you know, start an emergency fund, you know, start reading uh, books or even watching things on YouTube um, that talks about money and try to find uh, someone or a group of individuals who are like-minded that can support you to a, um, a financial freedom or, you know, a debt-free journey or financial independence. And your goal may not be to be debt free. You know, I know some people who, who don't care about their student debt and that's their prerogative, you know, but if, if you're not going to be debt free, then at least, you know, make a plan to ensure that in the long term, yourself and anyone that depends on you, you know, understand the value of money and what they can do with money in order to improve their life. And that's it. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, that that was so awesome. So awesome. We're going to have to bring you back to the table with me uh, when we get to talking about tips. <laughs> we get to talk about the tips for uh, reaching uh, financial freedom because we could want to, want to hit every angle of this. Today, we have been talking about crushing debt with Tamia Davis from Tamia's Tiny Budget. Find her on Instagram, follow her especially if you're one of those that uh, you've made some progress but maybe not as much as uh, you would like follow her be encouraged and apply the tips that she's given you uh, the knowledge that she's sharing the transparency that she has there on her platform um, and apply it to your life learn to give yourself grace and celebrate those small victories in your life until next time, I am your host here on the Woman to Woman Show and Trisha Bray Smith.